Hi, this is Anne from MadamSaw.com. Last month it was my daughter's birthday and uh, I always put up this paper flag garland but I've been using it for a couple of birthdays now so it was time to change it. And I decided to make one of my own. So today I'll be sharing this project with you, how to make a flag garland and you'll learn also how to make your own bias tape with a bias tape maker. So this is the result. Oh. This is how it was before with the paper garland and this is how it looks now with my new fabric garland. So you need fabric for the bias tape. I used an old sheet and I used a square of 34 by 34 inch which gave me more than 7 yards of 1 inch wide bias tape. You'll need colorful fabric, cotton preferably and um, so you choose. You, I use some scraps, leftovers and it's difficult to say exactly how much you need. I made 37 flags. Um, my triangles were eight and a half inch the long ends and six inch the short end and I think out of one yard of fabric you'll get uh, like 24 flags so 48 triangles. Um, you'll need a rotary cutter, uh, scissors, um, a mat, your ruler, uh, some pins and uh, clips and of course a bias tape maker. First cut the pattern out of a piece of carpet, a triangle. Then take your fabric and start cutting. I started with my scissors but finally I used my rotary cutter. You can cut two pieces at the same time if you want so that goes faster. And always add one fourth inch seam allowance. If you don't, you'll have smaller flags. You will need two pieces for one flag, front and back. So 24 flags means 48 pieces. Now sew the long sides of the triangle at one fourth inch seam. If you want, you can pin the two pieces together before sewing. Leave the top open for turning later. Now turn each triangle right side out again. For certain flags I had to use a crochet needle to get the point pushed out. Then take your iron and press. Now let's make the bias tape. Or when you buy some ready-made you can skip this part. How will we cut the fabric? Take your fabric and cut it to the biggest rectangle possible. Fold it in half so you get two triangles and cut them with your scissors. Then fold them to cut the strips with your rotary cutter and ruler. It's important to cut the fabric on the bias rather than the parallel to the fabric. The bias is the diagonal line in the middle. If you cut it like this, your tape has more stretch. It will be easier to use round curves and turns and it will stay flat and won't pucker. So cut your strips two inch wide for one inch wide bias tape. The first strips will be the longest. Stop cutting when the strips become too small. Now we're going to sew all of them together and pull through the bias tape maker. You have to put your strips in a 90 degree angle, right sides together and let each strip overhang about a quarter of an inch because we're going to sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Sew them right down on the red line. And just cut that little overhang of fabric right off and press the seam open. Now the result is a nice strip of fabric. Just continue like this with the rest of your strips until you have the length you want. Now take your bias tape maker. I use the biggest one in my set. A one inch wide bias tape maker actually makes half an inch wide double fold bias tape. Take the bias maker, put in the strip, pull it through and just iron over it. 
It's really easy. The result is a single fold, one inch wide, by tape. And when you come to a seam, don't worry, just pull and iron. If you want double fold bias tape, just fold the bias tape in half and press with your hot iron. Now is the time to start pinning your flags to the inside of the bias tape. You might want to trim all corners and threads to clean it up before we finish up. So just open the bias tape, put the short end of the flag inside and attach the flag with a clip or a pin. This is the fun part where you can think about the colors and the patterns. And then to finish off, sew the entire open edge from end to end, closing the bias tape. And check regularly if you have both front and back while sewing. That's it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment or mail me and at madamsaw.com. Bye!